Welcome back. In this video I want to take you through the design of my rainwater system as well as explain my firefighting system. So here's the tank, it's all installed as you saw in the last video, starting to transfer water into there now and you can see the outlets 2 inch as I explained earlier and it's copper underground and then goes to my future filtration system and then that's the incoming water through another copper line and you can see in the distance there the overflow line. Now here's my system layout in a simplistic view so I have the house and a number of buildings on this property and the first thing I do is I collect the water from the roof area through the gutter system and then I have these leaf eaters. Now these are called different things around the place. I am really happy with these. I've positioned them so they're at a height where I can get to them easy and they do a really good job. Now I have one of these on every downpipe. You can see there's a little strainer there that's removable, makes cleaning easy and that fork on there pushes leaves straight out. And I like this version with a lid on it because it stops birds nesting in there. I'm not a fan of first flush diverters so I've instead of first flush diverters I've simply used this leaf eater and what they call a wet collection system. So from my gutters they all feed and connect into this 100mm line which goes down to another tank and this one here is 18,000 litres or 5,000 gallons and I use this as a transfer tank. There's the inlet from all of the buildings again another strainer after the leaf eaters and because my property slopes down the pipe tees off to that tank but it extends and there's a manual valve at the end where I can open that goes into my dam as you can see in the background there and that just blows out any sediment that may be uh, in the in the system I have a float switch in that tank then it goes to another pump and a 5 micron filter and then it filters that water that ultimately feeds my large tank. Now here's my temporary pump because I haven't finished the whole build yet. You can see that green line goes from here all the way to my large tank which is about 250 metres away and it ends up through that copper line. The overflow is a 100 mil line goes to another dam I've got and somebody did ask is what stops bugs or bacteria going in there, how does it stay clean? So it simply drains into this dam. On the end of the pipe, there's one of these strainers and it just stops mosquitoes or other insects getting into that pipe. From the large tank, I still need to build a pump shed, but that will have another pump and a complete filtration system, which will then supply the house, my shed, and any other water source that I need, including all drinking water. Now I have a large dam, this first dam is about 2 million litres or 500,000 gallons and it's for bushfire protection as one of my sources as well as for gardening. Now Australia uh, does have high risk areas for bushfire which I'm in one of them and I for this reason have built a system to protect myself. If you're going to do this you really need to look at your own circumstances, have a plan and figure out is it worth uh, having a robust system or not or what level do you want to go to. Bushfires are, are extremely intense and you need a design that's well thought out. So again, you need to consider all the factors that are in your area. If you're on a hilltop, for example, I probably would think twice about fighting a fire because the heat is just so intense and it obviously rises. One of the big problems in a bushfire is ember attack. So these embers go onto your roof, they roll down the roof into your gutters and if you don't keep your gutters clean and they're full of leaves like this, you've simply created kindling for a bushfire and this fire will start pretty quickly if you get under ember attack. So the simple thing to do is keep your gutters clean, even put a valve in your gutters so you can blank them off during a fire and you can simply fill your gutters with water to reduce the risk. Now this purple line is from a fire pump that I plan to put down at the dam. I've already put the purple line in, uh, which is a 50 millimeter transfer line, and I've got fire hoses and a separate manual valve, which I still need to complete, but that'll be for sprinklers on the roof. 
when there's a bushfire and I turn my pump on, it'll be a diesel pump because I don't want to rely on the mains power. The sprinklers will be on the roof and they will go through the same system as my rainwater. So during a bushfire, it'll be dam water, which is not that clean. It'll go through that same collection pipe. It won't go through to my rain tank because during a fire, I'll have that valve at the bottom open and it will simply circulate water from my dam to my buildings through the gutter system and back again. And once the fire's over, I clean the pipe out and simply close the valve and I can collect rainwater again. Please put any questions you have down below. And if there's any information you want to share from your own learnings, uh, that would be great. In the next video, I'll start on my workshop. See you next time.